Another busy day of working on cars. More specifically, the Audi S3. We should, fingers crossed, be able to get this just about ready for the road in this video. But we do need to get the C63 off at some point, just so we can roll it off so we can get another car in the ramp. This thing is taking up a lot of space and we've got a lot of parts on order for this thing. They just haven't turned up just yet. So in the last video on the Audi S3, which I bought from a friend from auction, which was crash damaged, which eventually he will drive as soon as I fix it. We sort of cleaned out the interior. It was absolutely filthy in the interior, but now, it's looking nice and fresh, ready for me to do the airbags in the dashboard and the curtain airbags as well. Now, another thing that I did, well, I thought I did, was fix the misfire on the engine, but check this out. The misfire has came back. The engine light is on, and we're pretty much running on three cylinders. So as you've seen, we've changed over the injectors back to the old ones. It seemed to work for a bit, and then, sure enough, it's back again. I've given the car a service, and off camera, I've changed all the coil packs for it as well. The reason why there's still an old one on there is because I was playing around just to see if I can change the misfire from cylinder one to two to three, and so on. There's plenty of things that can cause a misfire, but I'm not too worried about the actual mechanical side of the engine, because I know it runs right sometimes. But there's one thing I want to eliminate before we start digging deeper into the engine, and that is the spark plugs. We've already changed them for Bosch ones, but apparently they're not the best, and they could be done, you never know. So we've upgraded up to the NGK ones, these are the ones I had on the Golf R. If this works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Let's go. Now when I plug the diagnostic tool into the Audi S3, all it shows us is that it's got a cylinder misfire, and it's completely random. Now these are brand new spark plugs and they should definitely not look like that. That black is there from unburnt fuel. So hopefully these new NGK ones solve that problem. You never know, they could have just been faulty spark plugs. But really to just diagnose a cylinder misfire, it's just a process of elimination before we find it. It's now got good coil packs, good spark plugs and good injectors. Next thing to do is just to clear the codes off and then start it up again. And fingers crossed that works. Come on. <laughs> this has happened before and it's deceived me. I celebrated way too early. So let's just wait for the cold start to end. And sure enough, after a few minutes once the cold start had ended, the misfire began again. I simply cannot continue to do the airbags if I can't figure out this misfire, I need to figure this out. Now, when it was on cold start, it ran fine. As soon as it dropped down, that's when it started to run lumpy. So next thing is a smoke test. So I got the car over to Mallory Performance to use their smoke test machine. This machine will blow pressurized smoke into the intake and will show us if we've got any air leaks and where they're coming from. And the good news is that it had no air leaks, but the bad news, we still didn't find the problem. Um, core packs changed, spark plugs changed, Engine serviced, injectors changed. Next step, we're gonna check the fuel pressure. The S3 has a low pressure fuel pump and a high pressure fuel pump. But after plugging the VAG cob into the OBD port, both of these figures look completely fine. So the next step is the fuel. The S3's got half a tank of fuel in, but the car was actually crashed in 2020. So this fuel is really old and could have been sitting there catching a lot of condensation. So I sent Liam off to go and get a big jug of 99 Ron fuel, and then we emptied that into the Audi S3's fuel tank. And what do you know? It actually works. So potentially, although we're getting no codes anymore at all, we can't find actually anything wrong with it. Putting a fair amount of 99 Ron fuel in, diluting it with the old fuel, although we could have drained the old fuel out, but it had half a tank and would have took a long time. It seems to be running okay at the minute. So we came to the conclusion that, oh, well, we, we're gonna say it was fuel. We're gonna say this sort of, the fuel has been sat there for way over a year in the tank and it's picked up some condensation or something like that because after putting some 99 Ron in, just diluting it, it seems to be fine. Give it a bit of a rev. Fine, but it sort of well I've not got faith but we'll see we'll see 
So with the misfire hopefully out of the way, the next step was to move on to the curtain airbags. Both of these are deployed left and right side and these are a nightmare to remove because of these clips here. The best technique I found was putting the screwdriver into the top of the clip here and just giving it a little twist to get it out. There's plenty of clips to get out and then the actual detonator was held in by a little torque screw. There is a slight crease in the headlining but that will come out with a bit of heat or a bit of steam after we put the new curtain airbags in which was 150 quid for the pair off eBay. Get in. I've left the A-pillar trim off because we're gonna need that off to get the dashboard out later. But yes, you can replace the curtain airbags without removing the roof lining. It's just a bit of a tight space. Some would say, it's a square space who have sponsored today's video. From websites to online stores, to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. Imagine the year's 2022 and you've just got a brand new business, but with no website. Hello, what are you doing? Let me show you how simple it is just to create a nice, simple looking website using Squarespace, or if you're more experienced, a more complex one. So once you're on Squarespace, there is loads of templates to choose from, and you can just choose one that suits your style best. I'm gonna start with this one. Once you've got your template, if you've got a logo, you can drag and drop that in. Any images, you can just drag and drop them in, and you can also edit and change the text as well. Something that's really handy as well, you can switch between mobile view and desktop view as well. So when you need a website, you know exactly where to go. Go to Squarespace squarespace.com or just click the link in the description box below and when you're ready to launch your website use code Matt Armstrong and that's going to give you 10% of your first website or domain name. Let's go check these curtain airbags. Okay, curtain airbags all done. We are moving in the right direction here. Next up is the dashboard. Obviously, we've got to replace the whole thing just because the passenger airbag is, uh, well, it's deployed here and, well, it's destroyed the dash. Also, we've got the steering wheel one to do as well. And not forgetting the knee airbag as well. Now, in the last video, I mentioned that I bought two dashboards for the Audi S3. And I'd love to say that I did this on purpose, but... I actually did it, this was a mistake. So this is a 2018 Audi S3, and there is an optional extra to have a digital dash. This one has got the normal analog one. Now me being me, looking at eBay, I just thought there'd just be one dashboard for the whole of them, and then the virtual dash part would just be the clocks, which interchange in the middle. But I was wrong. Audi actually do a completely different dashboard just for the sake of the virtual dash, and the digital display, and there's only a slight difference. I mean, look at this one, this one's for the digital display. It's got two bolts going in here and then the hood's a lot sort of shorter. And then this one, which is for the analog display, there is no bolts here and the hood is really, really deep. Now the plan was with this was to get Liam a virtual dash, a virtual digital display to sort of upgrade it whilst we're pulling the dash out. But I love to say it is as easy as that. It's actually not. There's a lot that goes behind retrofitting a digital display dashboard in the Audi S3. First off, you actually need the digital display. Then you need a different steering wheel because this one doesn't have like an option button for the digital display. Not only that, you need this center console as well. Again, something to do with the buttons in the center. When buying a digital display dashboard, if you buy it secondhand, you need proof of purchase and the lock button off the car that it came off to ask for permission to code it to the car from Volkswagen. Honestly, it's an absolute minefield. I really wanted to do it. It just doesn't look like it's the time to do it. So it's on to one of the bigger jobs of today and that's replacing the whole dashboard with the airbags. A lot of people steer away from crash damaged cars when they see the passenger airbag is gone because they think it's a fairly big job when really it's not actually too bad. That's unless it's an Audi S3. Now I've only changed BMW and Volkswagen dashes before but let me tell you this Audi had bolts upon bolts. There were so many holding this dashboard in. I really appreciate the quality of the build with Audis but this was really taking the mick. On the driver's side the dash was sort of in two parts there was a lower part underneath the steering column and then the big part above i then had to remove all the climate control the radio as well and sure enough there was some bolts behind that Then on the passenger side, it was also almost in two parts. The glove box was the bottom half, and then you've got the big top half at the top. I had to remove the CD changer in the glove box to get to some bolts at the back. Then remove some air vents to access the bolts for the flip-up screen in the middle of the dashboard. And then when removing the flip-up screen, there was another bolt on the inside of it. 
then with a bit of wiggling, we thought we could get this dashboard out. But no, we was wrong. We needed to remove the center console to get the dash out. So with a little leg stretch, because I was getting some serious cramp, we started to remove the center console just to pull it back to access a few bolts which were behind it. Look at that. Oh my <laughs> God. No way. <laughs> yes, that was what you thought it was. But with the center console moved out of the way, I could finally pull the dashboard out of the passenger side and we're left with this mess. Hopefully I know how this goes back together. Okay, finally the dash is out and let me tell you, this was the most complicated dashboard to remove. I thought an Audi S3 would be pretty similar or if not the same as removing the Golf R dashboard. There is bolts in here where there just shouldn't be bolts. Just when you think you've undone the last one, you find another bolt or another electrical connector. Just look at the state. We had to remove the whole center console, even though the center console isn't even connected to the dash, but there is two bolts here which hold the dash in, which the center console actually covers up. And uh, <laughs> they've just made it a lot more difficult than it should have been. We was up till two in the morning taking this dash out and I've gone against all my rules and that you should take the dash out and put the dashboard in in the same day. Now I've left it overnight, which could have been a rookie error now because I'm hoping I know exactly how the new dashboard goes back together. And check this out as well. This was the dashboard that we just removed and uh, there was one bolt holding it in. It was like, where the hell is it? We removed this and we found it there. Well, the guy who obviously removed this didn't find that bolt and uh, well, just went for the aggression effort and well just snapped it clean off i'm telling you there's bolts where there shouldn't be bolts on this dashboard but the time is ticking now where i slowly start to forget how the dashboard went in so i'm not going to waste any more time so let's get the new one back in so whilst the dash is out i thought it'd be a good time to replace the pollen filter and it was disgusting i sprayed some air freshener up inside the vent just to clear it out a bit and then put a new pollen filter in but no you don't have to remove the dash just to do a pollen filter <laughs> Now putting the dashboard in was actually a lot quicker than removing it. Now we know where all the electrical connectors go and where all the bolts went. So I can connect up the passenger side airbag and bolt that in and then everything else just follows. In goes the new knee airbag and everything slowly starts coming together. Quite satisfyingly. Now for a full airbag kit for the Audi S3, including the dashboard, second hand, you're looking around a thousand pounds, but you can't do without it. And finally, once the dashboard and the steering wheel is in, I could put the center console back in, which we should have removed first. Another thing that I need to replace is the seat belts. When you're in a crash, these do lock out. The driver clearly wasn't wearing a seat belt in this instance because it locked in this position. The seat belts are fairly easy to remove and it's only the front ones which have gone. But unfortunately for me, the new seat belts haven't turned up yet. So I'm just gonna remove these ready for the new ones when they arrive. And this is what the seat belt looks like. That metal part on the side is the tensioner and that's what locks out. With the seat belts removed, it's time to put in the seats ready for a full interior. A job well done. It's smelling, it's looking, and hopefully it's going to be functioning a lot better now as well. So now we're just missing the windscreen, the driver's side seatbelt, and of course the passenger side seatbelt as well. But hopefully they will turn up soon and we'll get the windscreen changed very soon. There's only one thing to do now is check whether everything's plugged in and everything still works. Here we go. Here we go. First time, no problem. Everything does seem to be working. This is working, does the screen work? Yes, the screen is working. All the dash is lighted up. All this is lighted up as well. And while we do have an engine light on, I'm not sure why. Hopefully that will go off once we start driving. We do still have the airbag light on as well, but that will obviously go off once we put the seat belts on and then we've canceled it off using a diagnostic tool. 
Um, Max, are you going to tell everyone how many bolts you've got left over after fitting the dashboard? Fair enough, I will. Now, every time I fit a dashboard, I like to do it on a point scoring basis. 10 out of 10 being that there's no bolts left. And for every bolt left over, you lose one point. And on this instance, we lost five points. So five out of 10, I'll take that any day. God knows where those bolts went. If you got a 10 out of 10, then you're just straight line or you've thrown the old bolts away. progress made on the Audi S3. It is so much closer to being on the road now. She is almost looking fresh. I mean, if it was all one colour, it would look a lot better. But we'll let Liam decide whether we're going to be wrapping it or painting it. There's still a few little things we need to sort out, like dings in the door here. But the interior is smelling better, looking better. It, well, you would not tell that this car has done around 80,000 miles. It, it looks absolutely mint inside now and with that pesky misfire we're putting down to bad fuel the engine is looking really clean under here as well we're obviously missing an air filter but i'm sure liam is going to go for an induction kit on this thing and send this to the moon but i'm over the moon with this thing and we're making really good progress so if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button and i guess i'll see you in the next video peace out Can't